Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to cover the topic of variance analysis in FPNA profile. So I'll give you some in-depth knowledge that how we are preparing the variance analysis and how we are preparing the comments, how we are giving comments on PNL uh, items. So it will cover all the things that we are doing in FPNA profile in real life. So uh, those who are having some knowledge about FPNA, so they must be aware of that how we are preparing the comments. So this video may help them to get some more knowledge on it. And those who are from other finance profiles like uh, FNA and O2C and AP, so they might have prepared some, some kind of open item summary, uh, some kind of GL reconciliations and some kind of aged items open summary they might have prepared. So they do know that how to do the analysis, but in variance analysis, what we are doing is, we are comparing the actual numbers with budgets or actual numbers with rolling forecast. So how do we prepare the comments and how do we report it to the higher manager or to the stakeholders? So that's I'm going to cover in this video. So stay tuned and please watch this video till last because uh, the practical P&L that I'm going to show in the last slide and for the first two, three, four slides, I'm just giving you the theoretical knowledge about P&L and other than P&L items. So please stay tuned and those who are watching this video for the first time, please subscribe the channel and like the video and share it with your friends. Those who are interested to get some knowledge about FPNA and please comment if you like anything in this video and do watch my other videos. I'll share you the link in the description. So I'm not taking much time. Let's start the slides that will help you to understand this topic. In variance analysis, we are simply studying the reasons of deviation between actual numbers and the budgeted numbers or in actual versus forecasted numbers. So we are just doing the analysis and finding out the reasons why there is variance is coming and variance could be unfavorable or favorable to our financials and that I'll discuss in the upcoming slides. So we are just providing our comments to the stakeholders and uh, we are taking the decisions in our upcoming rolling forecast and in our upcoming budgets. So we can just uh, avoid some of the reasons and we can mold our forecast and budgets and there are some unavoidable reasons and we can't avoid them. So we are just mentioning it in our comments. So and you can just refer the introduction slide. Uh, I have mentioned the whole study on it and it will help you before moving directly to PNL analysis I just want to let you through that what type of variance analysis we are preparing it could be budget versus actuals forecast versus actuals previous year versus current year actuals so budget means the number uh, we are closing it in the earlier of the year when the year starts so we are making some budgets that what will be the revenue for the year what will be the cost and how the PNL looks like so that's known as budgeted p &L. and uh, forecast is like we are doing the forecast rolling forecast every month or like every two or in a quarter. So we are just taking the latest scenarios and we are updating our p &L forecast revenue cost and all that stuff. And uh, we are doing the variance analysis on the basis of MTD, QTD and YTD. MTD means month to date, quarter to date, year to date and if you want to know more about these terms so you can just refer my FPNA basic uh, video the link is in the description box below to this video and uh, for starting from budgeted versus actual so whatever budget we have made for revenue and all that P&L items and in actuals when the month end get closed and all the revenue and expense margins profits get close so we are just giving comparison line by line to check that uh, if we are getting favorable or unfavorable revenue or cost then we are checking out the reasons that why it has happened then we are mentioning our comments on that and same in case we are doing with the focus versus actuals so the purpose behind that is what we were expecting to earn or what we were expecting to spend on the expenses and what we have actually spent so we are just giving the comparison and to check to control check that if it, if it is in line and if it is not then we are updating our uh, re rest of the year forecast accordingly we are doing the changes in forecast so that we can be more accurate and why we are doing the previous year versus current year actuals so whenever we are starting to prepare our budgets so we are comparing our current year actual numbers with the previous year actual numbers just to check that why revenue has gone up or gone down and what are the changes has taken place in expenses so to explain it better i just want to give you an example 
like in the covid scenario so if i'll say about the 2019 year our uh, like revenue of each and every business gone down and they have got more cost or in allocations like real estate and all that facilities cost or caps cost that gone down so that kind of changes has drastically taken places in that scenario so that's why we are doing the previous year and current year variance analysis so this is mainly for the budget purpose so that kind of variance analysis we are preparing normally budget versus actual focus versus actual and previous year versus actual current year actual so the purpose of all these uh, variance analysis is bit different and depends on the stakeholder that how they take it in their decision making process so major scope of variance analysis in profit and loss statement so when we are comparing our actual revenue with versus the budgeted revenue as per in point 1 revenue variance analysis and we are getting our actual revenue like one month and get close and we found that this is the actual revenue that we have for this period and we found that uh, this is greater than the budgeted or forecasted revenue so though it's a positive sign we are getting some higher revenue as compared to what we were expecting and we should have to find out the reason that why it happens so what i believe major reasons could be that uh, we get some more business or the existing business has grown up or there is some exist uh, more work that we have got from our existing clients so that could be the scenario where we can say that yeah this is the reason and we got some extra revenue or actual revenue is higher than the budgeted revenue and the second one is when actual revenue is lesser than the budgeted or forecasted revenue and this could be uh, the reason when one of the client or some of the client has left and uh, there is a lesser volume what we were expecting at the time of budget or forecast and that's why the re revenue is lesser than the expected revenue so that could be the reasons or there is some penalty or there is some credit back that we have to give our clients so that could be the reason when actual revenue is lesser than the budgeted or forecasted revenue so if the actual revenue is higher then it's a positive sign it's a, it means that we are growing up and if the actual revenue is lesser than the budgeted revenue that means we are going down we are growing low or we are just losing our client in cost variance analysis we have direct or indirect or allocation costs you can say as you all are from finance profile so you must be aware of that what direct and indirect costs are uh, still let me give you some brief explanation direct costs are those costs which directly related to production of goods or delivering of services that the that the business is dealing into and the rest all other costs are indirect costs or allocations you can say so way of doing the variance analysis for both the costs are majorly same but comments could be different depends on the scenario when month end get closed and we have all the actual P&L numbers and we found that actual cost is higher than the budgeted or forecasted cost then uh, our actual, co actual profits are lesser as compared to our budgeted or forecasted profits and vice versa reasons of getting actual costs higher could be let's say there is some seasonal volume up in delivering goods or services so the salary or raw material cost could be higher as compared to what we have budgeted or there could be some one-off costs for organization like any event going to happen then this is like one one time activity so these are considered as one of cost and uh, it depends on the seasonal cost as well some of some software or a hardware installation costs incurred that we were not expecting at the time of considering budgets and forecast so that could be the reason that why the costs are higher and if i uh, give an example for indirect costs uh, could be uh, we got some seed utilization benefit and seed costs are lesser than the budgets so these are the examples in a short video of like 10 to 15 minutes it's a bit difficult for me to cover the whole topic so i just provide you an overview that how variance analysis works in real life scenario still if you want to discuss something on this topic uh, then you can directly be ping me on instagram id so we are not only doing the pnl variance analysis only but we are doing other attributes variance analysis also like fts and seeds so in ft analysis we are doing the headcount variance analysis headcount variance analysis headcount here means uh, the active employees that working in a unit or in a business that we are delivering so the first of all the variance analysis comes in like band or grade mix so band or grade here means uh, 
the hierarchy that an organization follows starting from a grade b c d uh, to the higher level or you can say starting from analyst to the director level so if there is any uh, band mix or grade mix happen like when we are budgeting or forecasting so we are uh, estimating the number of fts would be working in our business for all the grades and if there is any uh, replacement of higher grade with the lower grade employees for delivering the work then we can say there is some changes has taken place in actual numbers so we can just give the comparison and obviously that will give an impact on our pnl if i am replacing the higher grade employee with the lower grade so i'll get the cost benefit so the second one is location mix location mix here means if the business is delivering out of uh, like four to five locations you can say from us from india or in india from gurgaon or in vizag so the cost of the uh, us employee is higher then india employee will be bit lesser and in india from gurgaon to vizag it would be more lesser so that kind of cost uh, benefit or that kind of headcount variance analysis that we can do and uh, the last one is the efficiency that's the important one i mean interviewer can ask you also so efficiency taken place when any employee has left the organization and we have not replaced it with the new hire and we are just delivering our work from the existing employees so the headcount has reduced as compared to our budgets as compared to our forecasted numbers and we are still delivering the same work so that will give an cost impact we will get some benefit on cost so that is known as efficiency like we are efficient enough to deliver our work even if any employee has left the organization so that kind of benefit or that kind of cost benefit is known as efficiency so this is for the ft variance analysis so in similar way we are doing the seats variance analysis as well so again seats count is there and real estate cost in the corporate world depends on the seats allocated to a business or a particular unit in the organization so we, uh, for the seats variance analysis we are considering two point seat utilization and delivery location majorly you, uh, the points can be more than that so i'm just giving you a brief so seat utilization here means uh, you have allocated the seat and you can utilize it from the whole day for 24 hours uh, and the business is following multiple shifts like starting from 8 am to 5 pm then there is a shift of 5 pm to 2 am for some other work so they can utilize the seat for the whole day and they will get the benefit because uh, the there are two employees who is sharing the same seat so that kind of cost benefit they can get so they can mention that we are getting some cost benefit because of seat utilization and the other one is delivery location as i mentioned like there are multiple delivery locations so the cost of the real estate or the seat cost would be higher at us and would be lower in gurgaon and it could be more lower like in uh, vizag location so that kind of benefits we can say like any business is delivering out to us and we moved it to the india location so we have budgeted in a us location but we are we are now started delivering it from india so we are getting some cost benefit seat cost benefit so that you can mention in a delivery location so that kind of analysis has been done in seat variance analysis So I have just made a profit and loss specimen, as you can see on the screen, that how the P and L looks like and how the comments has been uh, made for all the variances. So if you can see, starting from left, particulars there are some attributes of revenue, direct cost, indirect cost, and uh, gross margin, net margin. So these are like all line items. And uh, if you can see April, May, June, then you have budget, forecast, and actuals for each month. So when the period get close, you can just paste the actual numbers because budget and forecast number you would be having already because it closed before the month end get close. And in blue, you can say there are some various comments for MTD, QTD, and YTD. Again, MTD, QTD, YTD. If you want to know more about that, you can please refer my FP and basic knowledge video. Link is in the description. and then we are doing budget versus actuals and forecast versus actuals for monthly if you are comparing monthly numbers and for qtd if you are comparing the quarterly budget or forecast numbers with the actuals and ytd if you are comparing year to date budgets and forecast versus actuals so that you can mention the comments for each line item for each cost and for the revenue part so this is the pnl that how it looks like So guys thank you so much for watching the video I have this much content only to cover the variance analysis part and I know it's a wide uh, concept I can just cover a short concept only just to give a brief about 
that how it works because in a short video it's a bit difficult for me to cover all the whole concept and still if you have any query and if you want to discuss anything then you can just ping me on the instagram id mentioned on the screen and guys it took me a lot of hard work to make the pointers and to record the audio and to rectify again and again so please do subscribe the channel like the video and mention the comments if you want if you like the video and if you want to ask anything so if you subscribe the channel it will motivate me and i'll try to cover more topics on fp and a uh, so i'll meet you soon with a new video with a new concept till then bye bye take care